Hi, today we are going to discuss Poisson brackets. Okay, very important. And uh, the first session on Poisson brackets is of the form of a summary. We will look at the motivation for introducing Poisson brackets, a possible motivation, all right, and the definition and some of the properties and some of the important results. Okay. These properties and results we will be using in solving problems. Okay. It is also important for our future a thing called canonical transformations where Poisson brackets uh, have an important role. Let us first look at the motivation. Let us consider some function of q i and p i. Okay? For example, the kinetic energy q i and p i means all the coordinates and all the momenta. For example, the kinetic energy of the system, okay, it can depend on the momenta alone. It is a general function, it is a specific function of q i and p i or the potential energy for instance we could think of a potential energy which depends only on the coordinates okay now if you look at angular momentum of the system it it, it depends on the uh, post coordinates and momenta okay? so some general functions we are interested in such functions because we are studying the physical system we are interested in how the various physical quantities associated with physical system uh, are changing or how they uh, how they are uh, you know, changing with time, etc. So, we are interested in such functions from a physical point of view. Generally, let's let's call it a sum function f of q comma p. Right? All the physical things that we are interested are in the form f of q comma p associated with the system. Now, we have said that uh, the whole system, the physical system, it could be uh, a bulk system or any kind of n particle system. It can be represented by a single point in phase space. Okay, the state of the system is represented by a single point in phase space. Okay, or the single the corresponding point in phase space completely specifies the state of the system. We have said these things, and as the system changes, all right, or as your physical system changes, this point what is what we call as the representative point. Representative point. So, as the state of the system changes, we see that the representative point, the representative points moves in phase space, all right, or the representative point traces a trajectory in phase space, because initially this is the state, after some time the state changes to this, okay. So, we say that it traces a trajectory in phase space. Okay? Now, if we look at this point, representative point, as it moves through phase space, which means it, it just evolves with time. Okay? So, if you, if you look at this, if you follow this point, you see that there will be a value of f that varies along the trajectory, because this function is, this f is a function of q and p, q and p depend on time. All right? So, this q i and p i associated with the system change with time, generally. Okay? And this change is uh, given or governed by the Hamilton's equations we said. Okay? We know how q and p change with time once we are given the Hamiltonian. Okay? So, as the system point, sorry, as the representative point traces a curve in the uh, phase space, we say that the function also changes along this trajectory. Right? So, the value of the function at this point will be different from the value of the function at this point, etc. This means that this uh, the motion of the system along a particular trajectory, it turns f into a function of time, because q and p are generally functions of time. So, as q and p change, okay, we are talking about some property of the system. So, as q and p change, f also changes, obviously. Now, we can look at the time evolution of f, all right? You can look at how f changes with time. So, you find f dot or df by dt. You can use the chain rule to find df by dt. So, you can write f dot as dou f by dou qi qi dot plus dou f by dou pi pi dot. Okay? Of course, here we are uh, dropping the summation sign. Of course, there is a sum over all i. Okay? So, uh, there is a sum over all i. This, uh, But the summation can be dropped if you follow the Einstein summation convention which says that if some index, if some dummy index or if some index is repeated, you can sum them over. All right? So, repeated index are always summed over unless otherwise specified. Okay? This is Einstein summation convention. So, we can drop the summation sign here. Of course, there is summation here. Okay? Let us say there is summation from i equal to 1 to n. Okay? So, this i is a dummy index. You could use a different dummy index for i and j. Okay? We have got n coordinates and n momenta and you have to sum this quantity over all possible values of positions and momenta. Right? That is the Einstein summation convention that we are using. 
Now we can, we know how QI and PI evolve with time. Okay, the evolution of QI and PI are governed by the Hamiltonian. We know how it exactly they evolve. We know that QI dot is dou H by dou PI and PI dot is minus dou H by dou QI. So, F dot can simply be written like this. Okay? Now, we do not know exactly why Poisson introduced his brackets, but we can imagine a possible motivation. So, Poisson, of course, when he was working with physical systems, okay, such expressions always appear. Okay? Such expressions always appear. Okay? And it looks a bit complicated and they are they appear very often. So, he thought maybe let us find a shorthand notation for such expressions. All right. So, he said, okay, let us write this kind of expressions appear all the time. Let us write it as f comma h. Again, okay, of course, for obvious reasons, he called it the Poisson brackets. All right. So, we could also give a general definition for the Poisson brackets. So, Poisson said, let us define f comma g, all right, the Poisson bracket of f comma g. All right. Whenever such expression, such an expression appears, we can write it as Poisson bracket of f comma g, dou f by dou q i, dou g by dou p i minus dou f by dou p i, dou g by dou q i. All right. So if you define a Poisson bracket like this, then this complicated expression for f dot becomes a simple expression. F dot is the Poisson bracket of f with h. Okay. Now this summarizes very much. Right? So, that this says that the time derivative of any function, anything that is associated with your physical system, it can be found by taking or finding the Poisson brackets uh, with the Hamiltonian. Right? And what is the definition of Poisson brackets? We have defined the Poisson bracket by this definition. Right? It is exactly this, which means that this thing we simply define as f comma h, the Poisson bracket of f comma h. Okay? All right. Now, a simple example for this. You know, you can come back to the Hamilton's equations itself using this, right? You can ask what is the time evolution of or what is the time derivative of the coordinates. You can simply write as qk dot and by this definition you can say it is the Poisson bracket of qk with h, the Poisson bracket with the Hamiltonian. Similarly, you can look at p, p dot. What is p dot? And p dot is a Poisson bracket with h. p dot is the Poisson, Poisson bracket of p with h. Okay? Now, I leave this to you as an exercise to show that this actually uh, reduces to the Hamilton's equation. Also this, okay? this is also an exercise. You have to do this. It is one of the simplest exercise in uh, Poisson brackets. All right? So, what you have to do is that you just use the definition of Poisson brackets, just use this definition and find qk with h okay? and you show that it is actually uh, dou h Right, it is actually dou h by dou p k for example, okay? dou h by dou p k. Right? The result that you may use is dou q k by dou q j is delta k j, okay? which means that dou q 1 by dou q 2 is 0 or dou q 1 by dou q 1 is 1, which means that if k is not equal to j, you get 0, if k equal to j, you get 1. Okay? So, I want you to do this. Also, you remember that dou q k by dou p k is equal to 0. Okay, this is 0. Or generally, this is true. Do q j by do p k is 0 always. Okay, because we are treating coordinates and momenta as independent. Right? Now, this is very nice. Okay, here you notice one thing. I have uh, I've, I've used a curly bracket here. So, it does not matter which bracket we use. Okay, so in uh, there is so, in uh, examination, sometimes they denote the Poisson brackets with the curly bracket, sometimes they denote it with a square bracket. So, it can be used interchangeably. Once we go to quantum mechanics, of course, we will denote, uh, we will give a special uh, definition or we will give a special bracket for uh, commutators and then we will have to use a different notation for Poisson bracket. But within classical mechanics, we can either use uh, the curly bracket or a square bracket okay, according to your convenience. In the question paper, sometimes it is given as a curly bracket and sometimes as a uh, square bracket. Okay, So, you be careful about this. So, let us use this interchangeably for now. Okay, in quantum mechanics, we will fix the notation more definitively. Right. So, notice that uh, in this formulation, both these are exactly symmetric, both these are exactly symmetric. Am I right? So, this uh, you look at qk dot, it is a Poisson bracket of qk with h. You look at p dot, it is a Poisson bracket of p with h. It is exactly symmetric. 
all right of course there's an extra minus sign but that's hidden inside the structure of this Poisson bracket okay now this allows us to forget about q and p as separate coordinates and momenta we can simply introduce two n coordinates eta i okay of course n of them we started calling as coordinates and the rest n of them are uh, momenta okay but this allows us to simply write two uh, n coordinates eta i and simply write the the evolution eta i dot is equal to eta i with h okay so this is an elegant way to summarize the hamilton's equation okay. of course here i runs from 1 to 2 n okay of course uh, i equal to i from 1 to n are the coordinates and n plus 1 to 2 n are the momenta okay for now but as we go on we'll see that the distinction between coordinates and momenta are not really fundamental right we can interchange them we can treat all of them as coordinates or we can change one coordinate system we can go from one system to another where the coordinates become momenta etc all right so we are making the formulation more abstract here okay? so once we introduce this Poisson brackets we don't have to think of position and momenta as some kind of separate different kind of entities you can simply think of them as uh, 2n coordinates okay in a general sense okay? we'll see that in canonical transformation we'll uh, be using this kind of abstract notation right even though we started with uh, these things are uh, uh, these things as uh, coordinates and momenta with different physical meanings we'll see that we can interchange them all right in a way we'll be doing that in canonical transformation but this abstraction this Poisson brackets allows us this kind of abstract notation okay you don't have to talk about coordinates and momenta separately we can just talk about uh, two n coordinates in a general sense okay two n coordinates are in a general sense okay i hope this is clear you can call them as the you can call this as the two n coordinates of the phase space you can call this as the 2n coordinates of the phase space okay with that the idea is rather clear so all the equations of motion can be written as eta i dot is equal to eta i with h so the Poisson bracket allows an elegant way to write down the equations in classical mechanics okay and uh, turned it into ba most basic quantities of quantum mechanics the commutator okay that's something that we'll be doing in uh, quantum mechanics but i just want you to make this connection uh, we can turn them this we can take the Poisson bracket in classical mechanics and turn them into corresponding commutators in quantum mechanics and this procedure is known as quantization okay that's a way to go from uh, classical mechanics to quantum mechanics we'll be seeing more of it in uh, quantum mechanics okay for example the equations of motion can be directly uh, taken from the classical case and then we can uh, obtain the equations of equations of motion in uh, quantum mechanics okay by turning this Poisson brackets into corresponding commutators so there is a correspondence between commutators and the Poisson brackets okay now let's look at some of the important results all right the one important result is anti-symmetry you see that if you interchange you can prove this thing okay all these are left as exercises okay you take the fundamental definition and you show that it is anti-symmetric which means that if you interchange this you'll get an extra minus sign okay this is obvious because uh, we have in the definition of the Poisson bracket we have an extra minus sign and we have to take care of the fact that uh, there's an extra minus sign between q dot and p dot okay if q dot is dou h by dou p then p dot is minus dou h by dou q okay, there is some sort of when you change from q to p when you go from q to p you get an extra minus sign that's the reason basic reason but you can simply think of as the basic property of Poisson brackets okay so it's an exercise for you to prove and this means that if it's anti-symmetric the Poisson bracket of any function with itself is always zero okay any function with itself is always uh, zero Poisson bracket of a function with a constant is also zero for obvious reasons okay you can this all these properties are left as exercises okay for you to practice Poisson brackets so please do them it's not particularly complicated but you have to do them okay so there are some issues when you work with indices so you need some practice with it okay another property is linearity linearity is this property if you have a constant multiplied by u 
and you are looking at the Poisson bracket with V, then you can simply pull this K outside, okay, similarly. So, KU with V is equal to U with KV, you can pull this K outside, okay. Now, it also obeys the distribution law, which means that if you have U plus V with W, you can find U with W and V with W separately and add them. This is known as the distribution law. These are the properties. And now, we can combine these two into one equation, which is K1 U plus K2 V is equal to K1 U comma W, okay, K1 U comma W plus K2 V comma W, right, plus K2 V comma Okay. So, this equation combines both uh, linearity and uh, what is the distribution law. Okay. K1 and K2 are constants. This the same thing can be said for the second function also. You can also look at W with K1 U plus K2 V. Okay. You see that you can do exactly the same thing. Okay. You can pull the constants out of the Poisson brackets, no problem. Now, another important property, you can prove all these things, as I said, U V with W, okay, it's, it's just like the product rule in when we do the differentiation, you have to take U with W and V with W, okay. So, if, if first you take, you have, you can pull out U and then you take V with W and then you can pull this V and write U with W, alright. So, here we are not worried about the order of this thing because we are talking about classical quantities. So, it does not matter where you put this V or U. You can put the U here or here, does not matter. You can put the V here or here, does not matter. Okay? But when we go to the commutators in quantum mechanics, I am just giving you uh, an idea there. This order is important. All right? In that case, if, if we are talking about commutators, you have to always write as U, U multiplied by V comma W plus V multiplied, sorry, plus U multiplied by W, sorry, U commuted u commutator w multiplied by v, I am sorry. Okay. So, if these are commutators, the order is important, all right. You see that the v comes after u in the commutators, so you have to put it always after u. Okay. So, if it is a commutator, the correct order is here. In Poisson brackets, we do not have to worry about the order. Okay. And finally, the fundamental Poisson brackets, q i with p j is delta i j. Of course, you have to prove this. Now, these are the properties of the Poisson brackets. Now, you can actually now forget about the definition. Once you have all these properties, you can now forget about the definition and you just say that q i with p j has to be delta i j. All right? Now, this alone can be taken as the axioms of classical mechanics. All right? These five properties can be seen as the axioms of classical mechanics and you can, of course, develop, develop an axiomatic classical mechanics axiomatic classical mechanics. All right? So, even if you do not have the fundamental definitions, you define some sort of structure like this and you can get all uh, classical mechanics. Okay? You can think of the, you can think of these axioms as more general and uh, what do you say, the particular definition of Poisson bracket that we saw as a representation of this, this, this structure. Okay? That is one way to do that. All right. So, these are the important properties. Now, let us look at some of the results, right. So, if one of the, this, these things, okay, if you remember these things, you can easily solve some of the problems, right. So, some, now the important results that we discuss are this. If one of the functions u and v is one of the momenta or coordinates, then the Poisson bracket reduces simply to a partial derivative, okay. These are results, okay. We have seen the properties, now we are looking at the results, which means that u with q i Okay, this is some arbitrary function, but you are taking the Poisson bracket with q i. It is minus dou u by dou p i. Okay? This is something that if you remember, you can use in your problem. Similarly, u with p i is dou u with dou q i. Okay? It is dou u by dou q i. So, if you, if you want to take uh, uh, the, the, what do you say, the Poisson bracket with simply q i or p i, it, it has to be a partial derivative. Okay? You can see this. Now, this thing is actually related to the fact that we will see later the momentum. Okay, momenta are, are told to be the generators of space translations. All right? This is a translation in space, okay? dou u by dou q i, how the function changes with space. Okay? So, we will see later that these momenta are called as generators of space translation, etc. But more of it we will see later. And thus, this pop, uh, what we call as the double brackets. 
Okay, if u, v, and w are three functions, all right. So you can take the Poisson bracket of one, a Poisson bracket of any two with the third. Okay, that's called as a double Poisson bracket. For example, you can take the Poisson bracket of u with v, and then uh, Poisson bracket of u comma v with w. This is a double Poisson bracket. Okay, similarly, you can take v comma w with u. Uh, w comma u with v, which means that you first find Poisson bracket u comma v, and then the result you take a Poisson bracket with w. Okay, all right. Uh, and those this important results associated with Poisson double brackets, it's known as the Jacobi identity. Okay, it's known as the Jacobi identity, which which says that uh, if you take this Poisson double bracket in what is a cyclic permutations. Okay, in cyclic permutations and add them, you will always get 0. Okay, it is easy to prove this, you have to prove this. Okay, You have to prove, prove this. Okay, I think we will be proving it or we can do it as an exercise. Okay, So, this is u v w, this is the thing, it is u v w, v w u okay? and then w u v. These are known as the cyclic permutations, okay, like A, B, C, B, C, A, C, A, B, all right. These are the cyclic permutations. So, if you take them in cyclic order and add them, you will have to get 0, okay. You can either take it in cyclic order like this or you can pair the second two, does not matter. In any case, it gives you 0. So, the Jacobi identity is very important. Now, we discuss time evolutions and, sorry, time evolution and constants of motion, okay. So now let us uh, look at uh, some function which is a function of q, p and t. So using Hamilton's equation you can write this as dou u by dou q i q i dot dou u by dou p i p i dot plus dou u by dou t because there is an explicit dependence on time. Okay, This is d u by d t. Now we know how to write this part, we know how to write this part that is simply u with h. Am I right? This is simply u with h. So d u by d t can be written as u with h with plus dou u by dou t. Right. Earlier, we were talking about f with h, etc. But for simplicity, we assumed that f was a function of only of q and p and not t. That is why we did not have this extra term dou f by dou t. All right. Now, du by dt you can write as Poisson bracket of u with h plus dou u by dou t. Okay. Now, if u is a constant of motion, what does it mean to say that u is a constant of motion? It means that du by dt has to be 0, it does not change with time. That means 0 is equal to u comma h plus dou u by dt or we can say that uh, u comma h is equal to minus dou u by sorry simply or we can write as minus u comma h u comma h is equal to dou u by dou t or using the anti-symmetry of the Poisson bracket we can say h with u is equal to dou u by dot t. So, if this condition is satisfied, we say that u is a conserved quantity. If this condition is satisfied, we say that u is a conserved quantity. So, this is how you uh, write the conservation thing using Poisson brackets. Okay? Now, most of the cases will be dealing with functions which do not explicitly depend on time. In that case, we can say, in that case, this dou u by dot t will not be there. Okay? So, if u does not explicitly depend on time, we will say that the condition for uh, u being a conserved quantity is that u with h is equal to 0. If the Poisson bracket with the Hamiltonian is equal to 0, then uh, it is a conserved quantity. Okay? So, all the functions that obey this are, are constants of motion. Now, all right. So, the Poisson theorem, the Poisson theorem. So, Poisson theorem is a way to identify the constants of motion. Right? It says that if Lx and Ly are, const, are const, uh, constants of motion, then the commutator of Lx and Ly is also a constant of motion. Right? If Lx and Ly are constants of motion, then the commutators of, of commutator of Lx and Ly are also constant of motion. Okay? The proof is given here, but I would like you to do it as an exercise. You have to use Jacobi identity. Okay? So, if Lx is a constant of motion, then that means that Lx with h, the Poisson bracket Lx with h is equal to 0 and the Poisson bracket Ly with h is equal to 0. Right? Uh, you use the Jacobi identity here, you can use the Jacobi identity and you can 
take the Jacobian identity using LX, LY and H. Okay. And you will see that H with LX, LY is also 0. Okay. That's uh, so it means that if LX and LY are constants of motion, then the Poisson bracket LX, LY is also a equation, uh, constant of motion. Okay. Or oh, it's also called an integral of motion. Okay. Okay. So, these are the properties and some of the important results associated with Poisson brackets and uh, some of these properties are asked directly in competitive exams. Okay, they can simply ask them directly. For example, the anti-symmetry or this uh, Poisson's theorem, this can be asked directly. All right? Now, uh, it's possible that I, when I talked, I interchanged between commutator and Poisson bracket because they are very similar. Okay. So, I apologize for that. So, if I said commutator for Poisson bracket, uh, you should understand that I mixed it up, all right? So, you should make that correction in your mind. In classical mechanics, we are dealing with Poisson brackets. So, it's possible that at some places, okay, instead of Poisson bracket, I said commutator, okay? Uh, so, that mistake might have happened. So, I apologize for that. And uh, in the next session, we'll be doing more problems using Poisson brackets, all right? For the exams, these uh, problems using Poisson brackets are very important. Yeah? And some of the problems that we solved otherwise can now be easily solved using Poisson brackets. So I want you to look into these uh, properties and important results, memorize them, okay, memorize them, and uh, you'll see that you'll have a a great advantage in solving many problems for the examination. Okay, So, we will stop for now. I will see you in the next session. Thank you.